Well, if we go back to definitions, I remember you saying that the, how you define a patriarchy is institutionalized male leadership. It's a bad look on me that I didn't actually look the official definition up before starting this episode. But my definition of patriarchy would be a society that encourages, not only encourages, but expects men instead of everyone to take on leadership positions. So the obvious question would be, do we live in a patriarchy? I think that, first of all, it's radically shifting. Um, and at the moment, I, I'm not sure what it is, but I think that just because a society has men in leadership roles, I think that we cannot really look at that society per se and say that's a patriarchy. I think that what makes it a patriarchy is reasons beneath why there are men in leadership roles, because it could be a society where people are put in leadership roles simply because of their capabilities and because of their interests specifically. So, you know, so I see hard to draw a conclusion based on that. If we look at a military, we have a military, 100 men to one woman. So it's a 100 to one ratio. There's a criteria that people have to meet. And if only one woman makes it, well, it's important to look at the reasons why people are in leadership positions. It's not enough to just look at a society and see, hey, there's men in, in leadership positions. That must be a patriarchy. Maybe they're not. In, and I believe at the moment that they are not expected to be. As a matter of fact, you know, in a lot of cases, women are not only catching up, but also surpassing men. And because, you know, especially the left has the need to bend the ruler to the other side in order to get like a neutral um, equality state, they believe that they have to now encourage yeah. women more think, than men I think to become leaders. Much of what you say is accurate, but I think it's too narrow a focus. So let's step back. When I said patriarchy, I understand that to mean basically institutionalized male dominance. The first thing to recognize is it's a fairly recent phenomenon in human history. People often mistakenly say, well, we've always been patriarchal. We've always had men running things, and that's not true. Patriarchy is a product of the last few thousand years of human history. And remember, the human species has been around at least 200, maybe even 300,000 years. So there's a historical analysis of the emergence of patriarchy after agriculture. I won't go into that. But institutionalized male dominance as a hallmark of patriarchy, I think, is still with us everywhere we look. But because the human species is quite varied, it doesn't look the same everywhere. And it changes over time, as you point out. Right. So originally, the, the, the term patriarch itself means rule of the father, the idea that men rule within the household and in the larger society. OK, now, has that changed in some ways? Well, of course, it's changed because feminist movements have struggled to make that change happen. So in the United States right now, we have a, a woman running for president of the United States, something that was inconceivable when I was born. Right. So to say we're still a patriarchal society doesn't mean nothing changes. Things do change, but the core power dynamic stays the same. So let's take one of the, the other issues I've studied in, in great detail, which is the contemporary pornography industry, right? The way in which... Uh, and can I just... Uh, sure. I'm just going to... Uh, like I'm, I'm just going to jump in for a while. I tend to interrupt my guests a lot, you know, because I'm grandiose. Um, you said that contrary to a popular belief, there has not always been a patriarchy and... I, I agree. And also even more than that, in hunter-gatherer societies, there has not always been gender roles that we assume there were there. And this is a very recent discovery. I, I don't know if, if you have that information, but in 2020, there was evidence that suggested that some women did hunt alongside men in hunter-gatherer societies. And the discoveries are obviously pretty recent. It, it was in 2020 that they discovered a 9,000-year-old burial site in Peru that contained the remains of a young woman. And she was alongside a toolkit for big game hunting. And they continued their discoveries from, from there. So this is a pretty recent thing, you know. Now, it, it does... not it, it does, um, uh, it implied that the majority of women did not hunt. The majority of women still stayed at home. But it also proves that there were women hunters. There were some women who hunted. And perhaps, you know, in modern terms, 
intersex women but but anyway those were athletically gifted women who joined the men so the gender norms it's also an incoherent argument that it has always been that way because there were always exceptions to the rule yeah i i think your your point is well taken but the argument was never that in every gathering and hunting society only men hunted and women never hunted that was never the argument Human, there's a lot of variation in the human species and a lot of it has to do with geography, climate, and environment. Right? So it is clear though that there are patterns in foraging societies, that is gathering and hunting societies, where the hunting is predominantly a male activity, not in every society and not exclusively. But these patterns are a result of human biology about who bears children and who doesn't bear children and all sorts of things. So. We can see, and the important point I take from what you're saying, is that in, in human history there is variation, and so we look at patterns. There were gendered jobs in many foraging societies where women primarily did the foraging for plants and men primarily hunted, but it's not 100% of anything because you, you can't look at human history and say anything was 100% one way or the other. But when human beings started domesticating plants and animals, you know, the advent of agriculture. Human societies changed dramatically, and the pattern was a concentration of male power, control over women's labor and women's reproduction and women's sexuality. Right? And there are complex reasons for that um, that historians go into. But the world we live in today is a result of that shift when humans move to agriculture and move toward institutionalized male dominance, which has changed over time, obviously. But there are still patterns we can observe. For instance, men's attempt to control women's sexuality are still, from a radical feminist perspective, at the center of this struggle for women, women's liberation and equality. Right? And the, I started to say one of the places I've seen this is the pornography industry, which I study, which is a way that men buy and sell objectified female bodies for male sexual pleasure. And if you look at the porn industry, it is a deeply patriarchal institution, both in the way it operates and in the images it produces and the way that men use those images. Right? So you can make advances on one front. For instance, I mentioned a, a woman running for president of the United States. That's an advance from my point of view. And the society can also be pushed back in other ways around things like men's use of women in what I call the sexual exploitation industries, pornography, prostitution, stripping, all of these many ways that men continue to claim a right to buy and sell women's bodies. All right, so, but that's human experience, it's complicated. You know, progressive movements push on one uh, aspect and make gains and the power structure pushes back in other ways, um, you know, it would be nice for historians if life were clean and simple, but it's not. And so we continue to try and identify ways that this institutionalized male dominance still plays out. And we recognize it will play out differently where you live. I mean, the, the condition of women in modern Afghanistan under the Taliban is quite different than the position of women in the United States. Right? We're not saying that all patriarchal societies are the same throughout time, nor are we saying they're the same today. But what we're looking at is the pattern in which men assert control over women's sexuality and try to constrain women's power. That's the way I would look at it. And uh, I want to comment something about the pornography, but I just want to mention, because now you, you, you mentioned Afghanistan and Taliban, and had I been a professor, that would probably get me canceled. But I want to focus on Islam specifically. There's a similar thing is going on with other religions, but... Islam is still a lot more determined in, in in this way. As a Muslim, your personality, the whole personality, seems to be given to you based on your sex, and you're supposed to adopt the traits that are given to you. You know, so I still have a very hard time understanding the support for Islam from the radical left. I think Islam is a slap in the face much more than trans women, because out of all things that trans women gets wrong, it is true that blurring the lines between the differences between the genders 
is an effective way of achieving true equality because if we are not different then why would we not be equal so islam is not really sexist islam is not sexist but it emphasizes the differences between men and women a lot so what does one do if they do not fit the norm well you better fit the norm and it does not take into an account that there are many exceptions to the rule. There are many women who have masculine character and vice versa. Islam says men are taller than women. Therefore, there is a room for men, which is this size. There is a room for women, which is of this size. And if you don't fit, I mean, there's no way you cannot fit. You fit as best as you can. Yeah. So well, I, I think the mistake... that's my only problem with Islam. Well, let me interrupt because I think you made a a fundamental mistake when you said Islam is. Islam is a complex religion like Christianity, like any other religion, with millions of followers. And there is no single definition of Islam, as there is no single definition of Christianity. So much of what you said about Islam is true of Islam in certain times and places. It's also true of Christianity in certain times and places. I can show you conservative Christian communities in the United States that are essentially indistinguishable from the gender norms of Islam. That's because there is no single Christianity, no single Islam, no single Judaism, no single any religion, right? And, and this has always been the case. So I think it's better to ask, in what ways do religions in general, right, support patriarchy? So you can look at, for instance, the Southern Baptist Convention in the United States, which has been going through a scandal because the sexual abuse of women within the church has been hidden. What we should be fighting is patriarchal, cultural, political, and economic institutions, which are present across the world in various ways. And I agree with that. Um, but what I was actually meant to say was that the way people defend Islam is always based on differences between the genders. Why does the law allow a man to have multiple wives? Again, in certain situations, right? Why do we have that specific norm? Well, it's because of the personality characteristics of men and women. And there is no deviation from what you are being assigned. And this is, this is definitely an argument between Muslims and themselves, because it's kind of like the dogmatic religious people, the traditionalist and the progressive religious people, right? I have progressive Muslim friends who reject all of the sexist assumptions, right?